No more pressing your nose against the glass of the Lamborghini dealer. Performance tech once only found in supercars, now is found in some rental cars. I'm Brian Cooley with my top five forms of performance tech that trickle down from the cars you couldn't afford to the ones you can. Number five is launch control. This was long the domain of million dollar F1 cars with so much power that only a computer could get maximum acceleration without spinning the wheels. But lately it's trickled down to some high powered Vets and Shelby Mustangs that have the same <laughs> problem. You can even find it now on a Mitsubishi Lancer Evo X, not a terribly expensive car. Although I don't know if this one ever gets real popular because most of us aren't too worried about getting out of the hole in the shortest amount of time. Number four, adaptive suspension. A suspension that reads the road in real time and adapts to it first showed up in big volume around 1990 on the original Infiniti flagship, the Q45. Though you'd hardly know it since their first TV spots were infamous for telling you almost nothing about the car. Anyway, today adaptive suspension can be found in European market VW Golfs, Opel Astras, although it remains stubbornly upmarket in the US, coming down not much further than say an Acura MDX or a Buick Lucerne. Number three, the dual clutch gearbox. This self-shifting dual clutch manual transmission sprang from the realization that, let's face it, a computer can work a clutch and gears way better than you ever will. Hence, the first production dual clutch gearbox was in the 2002 Volkswagen Golf R32, a very rarefied model. But today, it's come down to Ford Fiestas and Dodge Darts with often crappy results in my opinion, but also in the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo, which around $38,000 is perhaps the best dual clutch equipped car I've ever driven and not that pricey. Number two, the turbocharger. Turbos have been around since 1905 or so, but they didn't really arrive until 1975 with the Porsche 911 turbo. All of a sudden, this forced induction technology was a household word, even though the car that made it that way cost like 112 grand in today's dollars. Today you go car shopping and you trip over turbo engines, all the way down to a $19,000 Nissan Juke and a bunch of other small and affordable cars that use them as much to achieve efficiency as performance. So today saying you got a turbo under the hood is no longer a brag. Number one has got to be push button start. This most ubiquitous and sometimes dumbest of technologies got its start in Formula One and other race cars, cars that have no keys obviously. Then it was a Ferrari thing where it showed up as a key part of their Formula One inspired Manatino steering wheel. All of this suggesting subtly that hitting a button is how you really get a hot car going and save a second that might help you win a race. Well today that's found in a RAV4 or a Chevy Malibu or almost every single car that I review. It says high tech without actually being so. For more on high tech cars and modern driving, go to CNETOnCars.com. I'm Brian Cooley.